Greetings to all, and welcome back to the series of lectures on cross-couplings. This lecture will cover the most significant developments in the design of phosphine ligands enabling cross-coupling reactions. Some classical tertiary phosphine ligands are shown here. Phosphines are among the most important ancillary ligands in homogeneous catalysis. All transition metals, particularly late transition metals, form complexes with phosphines. They are soft donors and match well with soft acceptors like late transition metals. The substituents on the phosphorus atom can be easily manipulated, which, in turn, can dramatically affect the properties and reactivity of the metal center. This will be demonstrated in the following. Phosphines are more susceptible to oxidation than amines because phosphorus in the plus 5 oxidation state is stable. Many alkyl phosphines are air-sensitive and even pyrophoric. Considerably less electron-rich aryl phosphines and phosphites are less sensitive or indefinitely stable to air. Additionally, more sterically hindered alkyl phosphines are less air-sensitive than less hindered alkyl phosphines. An amine containing three different substituents will consist of a racemic mixture of conformers in solution, but most phosphines containing three different substituents can be prepared in an optically active form. This is largely because the barrier to inversion at phosphorus is much higher than the barrier to inversion at nitrogen and typically ranges from 29 to 35 kilocalories per mole. p chiral phosphines can be resolved and stored indefinitely as pure enantiomers. William Knowles, a laureate of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for Asymmetric Hydrogenations, did most of his studies on p chiral phosphines. In general, phosphines bearing three alkyl groups are the most electron donating among the dative phosphorus ligands. Aryl phosphines are less electron donating as the greater S character of the sp2 hybridized orbital of the aryl group makes it a weaker electron donor than an alkyl group. Similarly, phosphites, which contain three alkoxy groups at phosphorus, are the least electron donating ligands because the electron donation by the alkoxy groups is weaker than that by alkyl or aryl groups. There are several approaches available for quantifying the donor abilities of phosphines. In a classic study, Tolman measured the values of IR stretching frequencies of CO ligands and corresponding nickel carbonyl complexes using infrared spectroscopy. Here, L is a phosphine or phosphite being studied. The values of IR stretching frequencies of CO ligands depend on the degree of backbonding to the CO ligands. The degree of backbonding depends on the electron density of the metal center, which, in turn, relies on the electron donating ability of the phosphine and the nickel carbonyl complex. Some representative frequencies for the IR stretching of CO ligands are presented in the table. The higher the wave numbers, the weaker the donation you have from the L ligand. These data show that triterpbutylphosphine and tricyclohexylphosphine are the strongest donors in the set. In general, alkyl phosphines tend to be stronger donors than aryl phosphines, and phosphorus trifluoride is the weakest donor in this set of phosphorus ligands. Alternatively, the electron donating ability of phosphines can be quantified from carbonyl complexes of other metals or by measuring the phosphorus selenium coupling constant of corresponding phosphine selenides. The steric properties of phosphorus ligands have been exploited many times to control the reactivity of organometallic compounds. Tolman can again be credited with an early systematic treatment of the steric properties of phosphorus ligands. Tolman devised a structural parameter he called the cone angle which is the angle defined by the outer edge of the substituents at phosphorus in the metal center of a space-filling model, as shown here. This work was conducted well before computer modeling and computational energy minimization procedures. Nowadays, to measure a cone angle, you must have an X-ray crystal structure of a gold complex of your ligand. Based on this data, the cone angle is estimated computationally. The modern alternative for the cone angle is called buried volume which is more frequently used for quantifying the steric bulk in inheterocyclic carbene ligands. For chelating ligands, the steric hindrance caused by the ligand is quantified by measuring the bite angle. The bite angle is the ligand-metal ligand bond angle of a coordination complex containing a bidentate ligand. The magnitude of the bite angle depends on the size and flexibility of the bridging linker between the two phosphine atoms. For comprehension, here are some common chelating ligands with corresponding bite angles. The larger the bite angle, the more sterically hindered the system will be. For instance, DPPF has the largest bite angle among these ligands and is one of the most successful ligands in cross-coupling chemistry. This diagram summarizes the stereoelectronic properties for a range of phosphines and phosphites. The higher the ligand is positioned, the less electron donating it is. The ligands positioned far to the right are the bulkiest systems, while the ligands positioned to the left are not sterically hindered. 
During the early years in the development of cross-coupling reactions, the readily available triphenylphosphine and catalysts based on triphenylphosphine were the systems of choice. As the possibilities of improving reaction conditions and increasing substrate scope by changing the organometallic reagent progressed, the nature of the employed ligand became recognized as the most important variable for controlling the activity and selectivity of the used catalyst. In 1979, Kamada was the first to note the beneficial effects of the bidentate ligand DPPF in the palladium-catalyzed coupling reaction of alkyl green yarn reagents with organic halides. Note that DPPF has one of the largest bite angles among chelating ligands. Before this observation, alkyl organometallics possessing hydrogen atoms at the beta position were practically useless for cross-coupling chemistry. The first reports from Buckwald and Hartwig on the aerylation of aliphatic amines were based on tri orthotalyl phosphine, which has a relatively large cone angle. A year after their initial report, it was shown that with ligands having a large bite angle, the Buckwald Hartwig amination of aryl bromides can proceed even at room temperature. Binap was examined by Buckwald, while DPPF was tested by Hartwig. You should remember from the lectures on elementary reactions and homogeneous catalysis that the reduced selectivity of cross-couplings for alkyl organometallics and aliphatic amines is caused by beta-hydride elimination. These unwanted side processes require a syn conformation for the catalyst and the beta-hydrogen, which is normally suppressed by bulky monodentate ligands or chelating phosphines with large bite angles. The next wave of developments in cross-coupling chemistry was initiated by the discovery of the crucial role of the electronic properties of phosphines in the catalytic activity of palladium catalysts. In 1998, the group of food demonstrated that electron-rich and bulky phosphines can enable Suzuki coupling involving a series of unreactive aryl chlorides. Their work was predominantly focused on the application of tricyclohexylphosphine and triterpbutylphosphine. Two years later, the group led by Beller introduced D. adamantyl and butylphosphine as a prominent ligand for cross-couplings involving unreactive aryl chlorides. Beller's ligand outperformed triterpbutylphosphine for this reaction and was effective even when used in ppm quantities. Gradually, researchers started to map the effects of the used ligand upon the steps in the catalytic cycle, including oxidative addition, transmetallation, and reductive elimination. First, it was found that in the case of bulky monodentate phosphines, the maximum number of ligands that can coordinate to palladium-0 is 2. Remember that palladium-0 needs coordination of 4 L-type ligands to have 18 electrons in the bonding shell and become coordinatively saturated. This means that palladium complexes of bulky ligands are normally coordinatively unsaturated. Notably, when heated, these complexes can lose one of the bulky ligands and act as a monoligated palladium-0 species which is even more coordinatively unsaturated. This type of monologated palladium-0 species is stabilized by the bulkiness of the connected phosphine and is easily approachable for aryl electrophiles and oxidative addition reactions. In addition, the electron-donating alkyl groups on the phosphorus atom increase electron density on the palladium center and enhance the rate of oxidative addition. Here, the effect of bulky, Sigma donor ligands on the activity of palladium catalysts is demonstrated using the example of palladium complexes based on triterpbutylphosphine. However, all the activating effects and ways of action described for triterpbutylphosphine are inherent for other bulky donor phosphines. For instance, coordinatively unsaturated and monologated palladium species were described for many phosphines developed by Buckwald. Little is known about how ligands facilitate or inhibit transmetallation. It is widely accepted that bulky ligands promote transmetallation by favoring coordinatively unsaturated palladium intermediates, as shown here, which allows the approach of the nucleophile to the metal center. Note that the monologated palladium species remain coordinatively unsaturated even after the oxidative addition. Following the transmetallation, the halogen anion on palladium, represented as X, is substituted by another nucleophile, which is normally much larger than the leaving X group. As a result, the large alkyl substituents on the phosphorus atom force the palladium intermediate to release the strain of the system through the reductive elimination of the product. This, in turn, regenerates the monologated palladium-0 species for another catalytic cycle. The unprecedented reactivity of palladium catalysts embodied by bulky, sigma-donor ligands prompted Buckwald and his colleagues to develop a new generation of phosphines that could be easily tuned and modified. This would offer new opportunities for the rational design of the activity and selectivity of catalysts used in cross-coupling chemistry. 
The ligands introduced by Fu and Beller possess only aliphatic groups, limiting the possibilities to modify their stereoelectronic properties. Having at least one aryl group connected to the phosphorus would solve this issue, as the stereoelectronic properties could be tuned by various substituents on the aryl group. As mentioned earlier, the group led by Buckwald demonstrated that amination of aryl bromides can proceed even at room temperature when using catalysts based on BINAP. In fact, they decided to develop bulky, sigmadonor phosphines based on BINAP. First, they substituted the binaphthal system with a biaryl to have better control over the effects caused by the introduced functional groups. Then, they substituted one of the phosphines with weakly coordinating groups or non-coordinating bulky substituents. The introduced substituents prevent unwanted cyclometallations, hamper the free rotation of the aryl group, and enhance the bulkiness of the system. This turned the bidentate ligand into a bulky monodentate phosphine. To maintain the bulkiness and strong sigma donor properties, they substituted aryl groups at phosphorus with tertiary or secondary alkyl substituents. For further control over the stereoelectronic properties of the developed phosphines, they introduced various functional groups at this aryl substituent. Over the early 2000s, they developed three generations of phosphines with various degrees of steric bulk and sigma donor abilities. Now, most of these phosphines are commercialized and named after the students who first developed them. It should be noted that XFOS is the most frequently used ligand in homogeneous catalysis. It is universally active for different cross-coupling reactions. RETFOS and RUFOS demonstrate unique selectivities in buckwald hartwig aminations. RETFOS is particularly useful for amination reactions involving primary alkylamines and anilines, whereas RUFOS mostly enables aminations with secondary amines. Over the last decade, they have developed the fourth generation of biaryl monophosphines for more specific applications. With these phosphines, they have increased the degree of bulkiness and complexity to a new level. Buckwald's phosphines have shown broad applicability in a diverse array of cross-coupling reactions, which will be described in the following lectures. The reactivity of catalysts supported by these ligands is influenced in complex ways by the ligand architecture, as summarized here. The large substituents on phosphorus lend stability to the ligands by slowing the rate of oxidation of the phosphorus atom. This feature makes these ligands even more practically useful in synthetic chemistry, as they can be stored under ambient conditions. The bulkiness of the ligands also facilitates the formation of monoligated palladium complexes and enhances their relative stability. The lower aromatic ring can serve as a ligand for the palladium center, further stabilizing the monoligated palladium intermediates. Substituents R3 and R4 enhance catalyst stability by suppressing cyclometallative pathways for deactivation. The presence of R3 also serves to favor the conformation in which the palladium sits over the bottom ring. This facilitates the rate of reductive elimination and enhances the stability of catalytically important intermediates. The electron donating or withdrawing properties of the R3 substituents serve as an additional factor for controlling the electronic properties of the ligand. In the early 2000s, Hartwig adapted a similar strategy for the development of bulky and strong sigma donor phosphines based on DPPF. To enhance the bulkiness of the system, they introduced a range of non-coordinating groups instead of the bottom diphenylphosphine. The bulkiness and sigma donor properties of the phosphine were further controlled by the implementation of alkyl and aryl substituents with varying steric hindrance. Here, some of the phosphines prepared in the group of Hartwig are presented. Most of them have proven to be successful ligands for cross-coupling reactions and other transformations. QFOS is the most famous ligand from the list and is commercially available. On top of the traditional phosphines described above, I want to highlight some important ligands introduced recently. Triadamantyl phosphine was believed to be the bulkiest phosphine and was not available until the report of Caro in 2016. However, the analysis of the stereoelectronic properties of triadamantyl phosphine revealed quite surprising results. Measurement of the buried volume from the corresponding gold complex showed that triterpbutyl phosphine is bulkier than triadamantyl phosphine. The electron donating abilities of the ligand were quantified from the values of CO vibrations of the corresponding rhodium carbonyl complex. Triadamantyl phosphine exhibits unexpectedly strong electron releasing characteristics that exceed other alkyl phosphines and fall within a range dominated by inheterocyclic carbons. We will discuss the properties of inheterocyclic carbons in the next lecture. Here, you just need to know that inheterocyclic carbons are normally better sigma donors than phosphines.
The concept of increasing the ligand donor strength reaches its limits with the use of trialkyl substituted phosphines, with tri adamantyl phosphine being one of the most sigma donor ligands. Ilides have a special donor strength to stabilize electron deficient, low valent main group compounds. This phenomenon has led to the realization that ilide substituted phosphine ligands might possess remarkably strong donor abilities. As a result, the electron donating abilities of phosphines were enhanced to a new level after the introduction of the ilide substituted ligands by the group of Gessner. It is worth mentioning that the ilide substituted phosphines are highly tunable by changing the nature of the groups on the phosphonium, phosphine, or central elytic carbon atom. In particular, a comparison of the Tolman electronic parameters with those of other ligands showed that ilide substituted phosphines are generally more electron donating than classical phosphines and can partly compete with in heterocyclic carbons. As ilides are generally stronger donors than alkyl groups, the diilidyl phosphines have the strongest sigma donor abilities among the known phosphines. The percentage buried volumes measured for ilide substituted phosphines indicated that they are more sterically demanding than most phosphines and, in this sense, are similar to biral phosphines. To sum it up, in this lecture, you were introduced to the main phosphine ligands used in homogeneous catalysis. You learned about the importance of the stereoelectronic properties of phosphines and how the steric hindrance and sigma donor properties of ligands control the activity of late transition metal based catalysts. You were introduced to Buckwald's ligands and other groups of highly active phosphines enabling cross coupling reactions. In the following lecture, we will concentrate more on in heterocyclic carbons and examine their role in the development of homogeneous catalysis. Thank you for your attention.